In terms of, of reach, the reach aspect of Ethernet over copper performance, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some numbers as, as they are practiced in the Exo network. So uh, the 10 meg symmetric Ethernet over co copper attachment service, if you like, or circuit, okay? For us, we'll, we'll guarantee that out to 11,000 wire feet, okay? For higher speed services, we'll necessarily use shorter wire lengths, maybe four or 5,000 and so forth. For lower speed services, a three meg service or even a one meg service, obviously we can go a little bit further. And the other dimension that we essentially have to play with is the number of copper pairs that we, that we stripe the ethernet frames over. And for us, our equipment supports up to eight ethernet uh, copper pairs in one bundle for one attachment circuit. Okay, so we adjust and if, if, if the reach is further, then we'll add pairs up to this eight limit. Um, if, the, if the reach is shorter or the bandwidth requirement is less, then we'll use less pairs. And that, that directly affects our costs and therefore our pricing. So Ethernet over copper, it, it's a wonderful technology. At Exo Communications, we're, we're strong proponents of the continued maintenance by the ILEX of the, of the copper plant uh, and so forth and so on. And we, we think the interest in the copper plant is mirrored, frankly, by our competitors, including some of the ILEX themselves. Let's move now to, to, to a kind of a, a different aspect or a different technology of delivering Ethernet-based attachments or just delivering uh, Ethernet services. So in those cases where we're, we're still in roughly the 10 megabit per second regime, okay, but we're outside of the reach of our Ethernet over copper technology for whatever reason, okay, we're, it's, we've got a service site that's in a city where we don't have colos and things of this nature then uh, the most pervasive type of access to a customer premise continues to be T1s, okay? So we have the ability with, with certain types of equipment to essentially stripe Ethernet frames over T1s, not unbundled pairs, but T1s. And you adjust again, just as was the case in Ethernet over copper, the number of T1s in order to deliver the, 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 sp the speed that is required. So for example, we deliver a symmetric 10 megabit per second Ethernet over serial, it is, as we call it, service over T1s um, using seven T1s. You can play this game with higher speed TDM circuits, T3s. You can take one T3 and stripe Ethernet across it, get an Ethernet over serial service of roughly 40 plus megabits per second. Um, you can take two T3s, stripe them together and get roughly 90 megabits per second, or, or I think it's actually 88 megabits per second. You can even use sonnet circuits, OC3s or even OC12s. There's equipment that will do the same thing. So the handoff to the customer is Ethernet. The customer can use Ethernet ports on their, on their switches, typically routers, which are less expensive than T3 or, or, or sonnet ports, okay? So we do that where we need to. And, and again, it depends on where the customer is and where he is in the bandwidth regime. As we move up that bandwidth regime to you know, we essentially run out of steam uh, with Ethernet over serial technologies at roughly 100 megabits per second, you know, a little bit more if you want to gang OCN circuits together. Now, essentially, we're talking about gigabit Ethernet attachments or sub-rate gigabit Ethernet attachments, which really comes down to, to, you know, how much traffic we allow on an attachment. It's fundamentally still a gig -E circuit, okay? Those types of bandwidth regimes can be satisfied by either fiber or by fixed wireless radio systems, okay? And this brings me to an important point about XO. XO is a large scale holder of spectrum, of radio spectrum in the United States in all of the markets that we operate in, and then some. And this uh, bandwidth, or, or, or uh, spectrum holding rather, is, is in uh, at 28 gigahertz primarily, and we've got someone at, at 31 gigahertz, and it's called LMDS. That's just kind of the name of the, uh, the interval of, fr of frequencies and the licenses that were allocated to us back in the beginning of the century, essentially 2000, 2001. So there are radio systems that can use um, this spectrum to deliver point-to-point -point service, in our case, um, up to full rate symmetric gigabit ethernet, okay? And we use them in a variety of applications and their utility depends a lot on the, on the nature of where the rest of our network is, where our hub site will be, where the customer's premise will be, and so forth and so on. The best of all worlds, of course, is to have fiber to all of our customers, okay? And then to put electronics on top of the fiber, whether uh, different types of fiber, whether it's Sonnet uh, today and in the past or going forward, Ethernet, carrier Ethernet switches, if you like, um, driving the fiber directly, 
Um, that's, that's the best of all worlds from a capacity basis and from a unit cost basis, presuming you have enough density of traffic from a given location. Um, the problem, of course, is that fiber networks are not as pervasive as anybody would like them to be. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what the latest measurements are, but let's say roughly speaking 25, maybe as low as 20 percent of, of all commercial buildings of all types averaged across the entire United States are passed by anybody's fiber networks. So if only 20 percent of the potential customer base is passed by a fiber network, this constrains them to the type of services that any telecom can deliver to them without building or extending their existing fiber optic networks. And that's always expensive and time consuming. But sometimes, you know, if you have, if you have the requirements for that kind of bandwidth, that's what you have to do. So to, to kind of come back to the top, EXO is, is agnostic. We use a variety of physical layer technologies to deliver what is fundamentally Ethernet services, okay, and those Ethernet services are used in two ways, as an end in themselves, just fundamental connectivity, point to point or any to any, for our customers to do with as they see fit, or they're coming to us for IP-based services in the form of public internet service, or private IP-based VPN service, or VoIP-based telephony services, or all of the above integrated together and handed off on one access loop, which in our view um, should be in an increasing basis going forward Ethernet, and that's certainly where we're placing our bets, so to speak.